I bought a three dollar bottle of wine, but then I I had a six hundred dollar bottle of wine. But what makes this cost more? And is it really better than this one? Today we're gonna find out. Alright, just to let you know, there's a difference between what makes a wine expensive and what makes a wine good. They're two different questions. So we're gonna focus on each one individually, for starting with what makes a wine more expensive. So if you break it down, you got four fundamental costs. You've got what's happening in the vineyard, what's happening in the winery, what happens when it gets out of the winery, like distribution, and then you've got external factors. So what's happening in, in the vineyard first? So in the vineyard, think of it like real estate, your location. Your location is going to be costing a lot if you're living in, I don't know, Beverly Hills or something like that. It's expensive real estate. Like in this one here, this is a, a Von Romany from Burgundy. It's prime real estate, they make some of the best wine in the world. So obviously that area, like you can see the hat, that area there on the back of the bottle, map maybe here, that area costs a lot to make grapes in. So they're gonna have to charge more just to do that. Whereas this wine here, the precious earth, Semillon Semillon Blanc, it comes from Southeastern Australia. And I don't know if you know, but Southeastern Australia is very big. So they have a lot of room to grow. Lots of lots and lots of grapes. Not like this couple of acres that they have in this one. And depending on how much you're going to do in terms of yields, uh, the higher the yield, the less expensive, the less of the yield, the more expensive, things like that as well. Uh, that depends on the intensity of the grapes. So what's happening in the winery? So all the machinery costs, if they're going to put it in stainless steel, if they're going to put it into barrel, these ones, French barriques, cost like $2,600 each. I very much doubt this has seen any oak at all, it's a Sam Sav. So it's going to be in stainless steel, so that's one way to get the costs down. After that, you've got distribution costs, so you've got to find someone to sell your wine. And they've got to make some money as well, so you sell it to them. And then that distributor is going to have to sell it to someone else to sell it for them. So you've got a retailer. So you've got winery taking some money. You've got the distributor making some money. And then you've got the retailer making some money. So you can see how there's like 100%, then 150%, 150%. You see how it racks up. And then last of all, you've got external factors. Things like luxury branding. If you've got... Uh, Von Romney Conti, your Cristal, your Don Perignon, they're very big names and they know it. And people are going to buy it because of the prestige. People look at them like, oh my god, look at me. <laughs> yeah, so they know they can charge a bit more on top of that. The quality is there, don't get me wrong, but also there's a premium for those products as well. Alright, so we touched on what makes them expensive, but what makes them good? What makes a wine good? And despite the, the quantity that you're pulling out at harvest time and uh, the quality of the grapes as well, it, it ultimately comes down to personal preference. Like I might like some light bodied Pinot Noir from Mornington Peninsula, or I might like a nice Savion Blanc from the Marlboro. And those things aren't too expensive. They cost like anything between like 10 to $30 for a bottle of wine. But you could easily get like a $3 bottle of wine, a Sam Savion Blanc from Audi and you might enjoy it. Like I'm pretty sure I know ex I know what to expect when I drink this wine. It's going to be fresh, it's going to be vibrant, it's not going to have too much, too much flavor when it comes to varietal characteristic, but it's going to be a wine and I know exactly what it's going to be like. So that's the reason why someone can enjoy it. You might like your sweet wine, so you might like drinking Moscato. You might like drinking white Zinfandel. And you might like, like drinking um, a cabinet Riesling. You might like these things. And they're not too expensive to buy. You might not like your French Bordeaux. You might not like the, the US Zinfandels and Cabernets, which cost $80, $50, whatever how much, sometimes even more. A $200 bottle of Cabernet, for instance. You might not like those styles. But there is always something for everyone when it comes to wine. And your preference will dictate whether you like 
a wine or what makes a wine good in your eyes. So when someone says, oh, this wine is fantastic, you should try it. It's ultimately comes down to your own opinion as well. What someone likes isn't necessarily what you're going to like. And to find that out, you're ultimately going to have to try a variety of different wines just to find out what you like. I mean, the more educated you are, the better opportunity you have to drink wine that you that you like, and you might find something new. And by I you know watching this channel and seeing me describe some wines, you might ultimately find something that you like. All right. If you come this far, that means you've reached the end of the video. So don't forget to subscribe and like this video and leave a comment down below. So if you do have any wine questions, we do have a segment called Ask Mark, where I answer all of your wine questions. But that's going to wrap up for today's video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. So bye bye. Hi, this is the director of the video today. Hi Maya, this is the director. Hi! Action! Action! Say action! Oh yeah. Yeah, you sound action! Chick! <laughs>